Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is another Dow Drops exclusive right here. And I've got a Campana in the house. What's going on? Hey, what's up? What's up? How's it going? It's great. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here, for taking the time uh, to do this interview, to, to get people to get to know you a little bit better for this Dow Drop. And we are uh, live in Crypto Voxels right now, the virtual world where we are holding the release party for the official audio NFT for cloud cover. Uh, maybe you can just start by, you know, introducing yourself, letting the people know who you are, what you do, where you're from and all that stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, my name's Campana. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm a rap hip hop artist uh, and I um, do a lot of things when it comes to my content with uh, videos, helping direct videos, um, graphics, uh, all of those sort of things, um, producing um, and yeah. Dope. And so like, how long have you been making music for? Uh, I've been making music since I was like 15 years old, like recording music. So uh, to put that in perspective, I'm 26 now. So for about 11 going on 12 years, I've been recording music and releasing music. Nice. And, and who would you say are, are some of uh, your influences when it comes to like MCing? Um. I like a lot of people like Fonte, Lupe Fiasco, Kendrick Lamar, um, Drake, J. Cole. I'd say a lot of those people are people who I grew up listening to, Kanye West as well. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I would say like a lot in, in a lot of different aspects, like amalgamation of a lot of those artists, I'd say have been pretty influential to like my artistic the way i carry my art so um yeah tell us a bit about the seattle scene i mean are you originally from seattle uh you know like um so i'm from by way of seattle from from bremerton which is like a ferry ride away from seattle it's only an hour um but i've been in seattle since i graduated high school in 2012 um and i've been I've had like the majority of my music foundation out here in Seattle, uh, a lot of opportunities and a lot of collaborations uh, have came out of me living within Seattle. So uh, I, I would be myself as like a Seattle artist and being from here to that extent. Nice. And, and what would, how would you describe like the hip hop scene in, in Seattle in terms of yeah. like what's been happening uh, over since, since you've been active in it and, and sort of your experiences? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's pretty thriving. Like there's a big hip hop scene and not only Seattle, but uh, you know, the Pacific Northwest as a whole, there's a lot of artists from here all the way down from here to Tacoma and even further down to like Portland. There's a lot of artists uh, within like the hip hop scene who have very diverse sounds, very, uh, you know, either unique sounds to like, you know, the Pacific Northwest feel or just like, you know, universally like have their own sounds that, uh, kind of fit outside of the box of the 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 original sound from here so you you'll find a lot of everything within like seattle's music scene as a whole uh when it comes to hip-hop and rap yeah because seattle mostly like most people associate that with the grunge movement and mm -hmm. uh, you know and like it's um we haven't really heard too much of Seattle in terms of uh, hip hop on sort of the global scale and that sort of thing. Do you think that that lends to the identity and the style that's created by the artists in Seattle? Uh, not necessarily. I could say uh, maybe to an extent, uh, like I said, uh, the sound of Seattle hip hop is very diverse. So, uh, you know, I can't necessarily say that it doesn't influence some of the sounds here because it definitely does. But I feel like um, it has evolved past that that 
um, genre uh, in different ways of where it's like approached in a more like to, to a more like national extent. So a lot of sounds you'll hear, you know, um, you know, you could either tell that the artist is from Seattle or some of the times, like if, since the internet is such a, a vast culture nowadays, uh, you'll be able to, you know, hear someone's music from Seattle and kind of not even pinpoint their sound to being influenced from here. Yeah, and, uh, you know, how would you say that um, the, the pandemic has impacted uh, you personally and your and I guess the scene in Seattle and in general, what's happening with with music? Yeah, well, so with Seattle, it's like a very uh, show heavy city. So there's always a lot of shows within the culture going on, like a lot of events that highlight a lot of, you know, artists coming together and collaborating and doing shows. And like, there's even like a, a prominent house party scene out here as well. So there's a lot of house shows that go on. So when COVID hit, you know, all of those things had died down. Um, I used to play in a live band called Cosmos and we would do a lot of shows. We do shows like back in 2017, we did over like over 100 shows, 2016 and 2017. So that was like a heavy part of, you know, of what we did. So when this pandemic hit, you know, it was all about trying to find ways to stay engaged with your current fan base and current listeners, or, you know, maybe just taking that time to buckle down and work on some new material to, you know, arise from the pandemic with, to, you know, carry on what you've been doing prior to it hitting. Yeah, I think how has it affected oh, oh sorry. Yeah, go on, go on. How, how has it affected how has it affected your uh recording process as well? Are you set up to be able to do a lot of the work on your own or uh has outsourcing kind of become a new foundation of your process? Um I still I still do a lot of stuff on my own because uh, like my producer, he lives not too far from here as far as recording and everything goes. So I've been able to record pretty easily and I've been able to um, finish and, you know, really work on this album I've been working on. Um, so that's been like the, the best thing I've been able to do when it comes to this whole pandemic, like being able to record and do everything else. So do, do you think that like, you know, um, the, the pandemic and the impact, uh, the, uh, the no more live shows and just sort of the, the changing of the strategy, do you think that has exposed some of the weaknesses and flaws in the music industry? Um, to an extent, uh, like knowing that, you know, that is like one of the predominant ways that artists like sustain their income and things like that. It shows a lot of flaws in like the streaming era we're in. Like there's even like big national, international acts who are like resorting to like getting funds from their fans in different unique ways because they're losing majority of their income from not being able to tour. So I feel like that as a whole has exposed a lot of the flaws within the music industry, just knowing that more than like 75, 80% of, you know, artists' incomes come from being on the road, being face-to-face, -face, being in person. And when pandemic like this hits, you're not able to do that. So I think that that is what, you know, a, a big flaw that uh you know kind of people were able to notice from this yeah i think that also is, is kind of what leads us here as well right um you know with exploring releasing music as audio nfts and and this whole blockchain space um maybe you could talk to us about you know your your impression of NFTs and, you know, anything that, uh, you know, you know about this, the space and your thoughts about sort of the future of this new avenue for delivering music. Um, yeah, so uh, I 
kind of first got put on to like NFTs and the whole nature of them as a whole, like back in December. Um, and that was when uh, I got into like um, NBA Top Shot, which is like a big NFT community with digital card collectibles and things like that. And like kind of just getting versed in that whole universe. Uh, and like prior to that, like just being starting to become an investor of crypto back in like October, November. So not even that long, but like, I feel like within this time frame, which is like a four to five month time frame, I've learned so much about what it is that crypto is and like how NFTs can, you know, like kind of, you know, open a new realm of possibilities for artists, you know, to earn income, uh, you know, and if it's not that, you know, just collecting things and, you know, finding the value in that just as much as people find in physical and tangible, you know, collectibles and things like that. And it's like now being in, you know, the, the time we're in, like it's 2021, I would like equate this to like, you know, how people probably felt when the internet was just coming out, you know, like a lot of people, you know, didn't, you know, there was a lot of people who were iffy about it, I'm sure. And there was a lot of people who like wholeheartedly believed in what the internet could do for, you know, the world. And, you know, I feel like those people who like invested and put, you know, their best foot forward within those markets are thriving today. And so like, that's how I see it now that I'm, you know, older and more knowledgeable and wanting to, you know, put my money into things that I feel like are, you know, important and more tangible. It's like, you know, NFTs, I feel like are, a, you know, a, a safe bet of doing so just seeing how the trajectory of, you know, the whole online infrastructure is, you know, headed and especially more so with, you know, this pandemic happening and, you know, it kind of like, you know, kicking the gears into like the whole NFT marketplace and things like that. Um, you know, I feel like there's no better time than now to like really, you know, get into it while, you know, it's in a bubble because like a lot of these things could end up having a lot of value in years to come. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to look at it. Like, um, you know, future forward, right? Um, what are your, like, have you had these conversations with your peers there, like in Seattle and, and, and around within your network about like NFTs and having these conversations and how have people kind of responded to this idea? Uh, yeah, so, you know, there's been flack on either or, or sides, I feel like there's a lot of people who can't really conceptualize it, but like, at the same time, like, if they see, uh, like, I'm like, usually what, you know, fuels and motivates a lot of people is, you know, money. So it's like, I'm letting them know, like, I'm making real tangible money from a lot of these things that I'm investing in and things like that. And that usually propels them to, you know, be like, all right, let me look into this. Like, you don't have to 100% know every, everything about everything there is with like crypto and NFTs. Like, if you just know the fundamentals of, you know, putting money into something, it could drop at one point, it could rise at one point. But if you look at it as long-term investments, or if you have price targets and things like that, you know, you you'll be set and you'll you're you're in a good position to earn money versus where like usd has become a, a depreciating asset since its inception you know you know it it prompts a lot of people to look into it and there's been a lot of you know flack about like the amount of energy consumption that nfts and crypto as a whole has and things like that but I also, you know, feel like that's a big like fear mongering tactic that a lot of, you know, big mass media is utilizing because it is a decentralized platform and it's 
it thrives off of community ownership. And that's something that's inherently against capitalism and that, you know, devalues the, the US dollar. And if you put it in that sort of perspective of energy consumption, you know, there's a lot of exploitative measures that, you know, the US government and a lot of different westernized powers utilize to exploit natural resources and things of those sorts to uphold the value of the US dollar and other currencies, which in essence is way more energy consuming than investing into a proof of work or proof of stake system like current cryptocurrency and NFTs are. And I feel like a lot of the, the currencies are way more, a lot of the cryptocurrencies are way more cognizant of the amount of energy consumption that's being utilized. So they're, they're more they're working towards more environmentally friendly measures, even though it's not the most environmental, uh, uh, it's not the most environmentally harmful, you know, piece of currency that's out there. So, you know, just looking into those things and, you know, having those conversations with people, uh, you know, and just really being able to, like, really get down to, like, what your carbon footprint really entails, let you know that it's not really as bad as the mass media tries to make it seem. Yeah, those, those are good points. And, and uh, having these conversations, I, I think, are important, um, you know, and particularly off of the social media platforms, like having these conversations yeah. one on one with people. Uh, let's dive into the music now. Tell us a bit about Cloud yeah. Cover and, and you know, what the song is about, who produced it. Uh, give, give us a little information about the song. Yeah, so the song Cloud Cover, it was produced by one of my good homies, Jaga. I've been making music with him pretty much since I started making music back in high school. Um, and uh, over this past year, I feel like uh, for me, it was a lot of growth, uh, a big, heavy radicalization period for me. And just, you know, just been reading a lot, studying uh, up a lot on, you know, what, you know, the true essence of capitalism is and, you know, different measures and different systems that support the most marginalized communities like communism and socialism and things of that sort. And so like just developing my political compass that has been, uh, you know, aside from westernized media and their narrative of what capitalism is and studying into different societies, different countries that have been vilified by the U.S. for as long as I've been alive and prior to then, and just being, seeing how heavily propagandized us as a community have been has like inspired me to like research into these other communities and really see like what their measures are of socialism and communism is for myself. And seeing that these are actually me measures that support all people and things of that sorts and looking into different African countries and seeing how like programs and initiatives like AFRICOM and how the CIA and the FBI uh, do all sorts of things all over the global south and Africa, you know, really, you know, piqued my interest and had me starting to pay attention to a different extent of how everything in the world operates. And so that's what the song Cloud Cover kind of touches on, just a lot of those things that happen within like our world and how the US empire thrives and how everyone is like made to believe that voting will change the material conditions of the people within our society when those things have never really held that weight 
as long as you know the electoral system has been around. And so that's pretty much what cloud cover touches on. Um, and yeah. Is this a part of a larger uh, project, like an EP or an album, or is this kind of a standalone single that you just were exploring these themes, uh, or where are, you, where are you going with the overall art? Uh, yeah, this is just a standalone single. This is a, a single that I wrote like last August. I have a couple other singles that I'm going to drop throughout the course of the year, but uh, there's probably one more single in general that I'm going to drop prior to my album that I'm dropping uh, within a couple months. And the album is which uh, I, I shot a whole short film behind it. We just got wrapped up with the filming for it. And that's going to be dropping alongside the album. So um, yeah, this is just a standalone for, for the most part, yeah. Uh, are you working with uh, Jaga on the the album as well, or is this is this also kind of a one off on on that front too? Um, not on the album. He he has like some minor uh, vocals, background vocals on one of the songs, but like this whole album, I worked on with uh, one of my homies, Tylee. He. Um, is like the main executive producer alongside P. Cruz. And we've been working on this for the past two years. So like, it was a perfect time. Like, it was a blessing in disguise for quarantine to hit so we could really lock in and, you know, buckle down on finalizing the project and everything. But um, I do have more things in the work with Jaga, just nothing tailored to this album that's coming out. Is that Tylee from All Star Opera? Uh, no, his name's Tyree, okay. so it's- Oh, Tyree, T sorry, I, I thought you- Yeah. I, I, my, my bad. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> um, it, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, is, is there anything you can share um, about the artwork for, for this, uh, for Cloud Cover and, you know, who, who you're working with and you know, how it came about and, and the concept at all? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so um, for the cloud cover artwork, I did that with uh, my homie uh, Ben Wade. Uh, actually, I've never met him in person, but we worked on a couple of cover arts together. But um, pretty much the cover art. Uh, showcases like just me like writing in a composition book like electricity and flames coming from the pencil uh and like has me like it looks like in outer space and things like that which i i think super cool um and shows like pages coming it's like very like comic book-esque and i feel like uh like ben's his art is so unique I rarely see like people like take like that sort of approach with their art. Um, and he's just been getting better too. Like ever since I started working with him a couple of years ago, uh, he's really been able to like hone in on his style. Um, and like now he's starting to get into motion graphics. So like there's gonna be a motion piece as well that's, uh, minted within the nft package that i'm releasing alongside cloud cover um and um just so other other little things as well that we're working with on different little projects coming within the near future as well since you've uh entered into the nft space and you know the world of possibilities have you already started kind of making plans for future NFT releases that you, you're thinking of or still just kind of yeah. seeing how this one goes? Yeah, so I've been thinking, like trying to figure out because I know, uh, you know, I have this short film coming out with the album. So I've been trying to find ways how I can like, cause like, for example, with uh, NBA Top Shot, they, they're digital cards, but they're called moments. So they have different moments of different plays that that are highlighted from different games throughout the season, last season, depending on whatever series the cards are. Um, so I've been thinking of like trying to do like my own little moments 
for like different scenes of like the short film and like having those minted as like ways for you know people to own that sort of collectible and things like that so I'm still you know thinking as a whole like how I want to package things but I definitely want to go about you know doing some of those types of things for when that album comes out That's really cool. I like I like the idea of exploring that. Yeah. Nice. So um I think I think we're good on the interview. I I just thought maybe you want to like say a few words to the people out, out here uh watching it and in crypto voxels and just uh soaking in the atmosphere and maybe how they can get get at you and get in touch and just drop uh whatever shout outs. Yeah. Um yeah, uh, all I have to say is thanks for, you know, getting me informed about this space. Excited to be here. Um, if you guys wanted to stay tuned with uh, my upcoming releases, as far as the short film and the album coming out, uh, you can follow me at Campana Zone on Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, and my website, Campana.Zone. I'll be releasing the short film and the album on that front. And, you know, just keeping posted there for more, you know, NFTs to come. Uh, you'll be, you'll be in the right place. <laughs> nice. Thanks so much, Campana, for joining us. Uh, Cloud Cover is the name of the NFT and you can get it. It's up on the wall somewhere, left, right side. Uh, you'll, you'll find it in the venue. You can connect with Campana there. We'll have all the links photos and all that kind of stuff and we'll be playing music from the man himself in the venue so thank you so much for joining us for this dow drops uh, interview really appreciate your time and uh, looking forward to this all right Peace.